Hello. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Good. Hello. Oh. Hmm. Got an echo here. So I have to. Okay, how do I do this? <laughs> this is my first time live streaming also to YouTube. So uh, how can I do that? Got an echo here. Maybe that doesn't work. Yeah, okay. How are you all? Everybody good? If uh, you can hear me and see me. Could you please write a sort of my confirmation in the chat? Maybe a little yes. And make sure while you're in the chat, you can also make sure that you send it to all the panelists and attendees. You need to mark that little arrow down and you can uh, change it so that we all can see what you're saying. I've had some trouble with my camera, so it is, uh, for some reason, doesn't want to be on focus on with me until unless I'm back here. So we'll see how that works. Hi, Claire, nice to meet you. So good to see you, everybody. I would love for you to just tell me a little bit uh, where you're from in the world, where you are right now, maybe what time it is. For me, it is half past one. And uh, let's see if my other screen doesn't want to work. God, the technical. Yeah. Okay. And I disappeared. And I'm bubbling. I, okay, let's see. Let's. See. Can you hear me? No. <laughs> yes, I think I'm back. Let's hope this stays like this. I don't know really what's going on with that. They have two screens. Okay, let's get started. I'm gonna start sharing my screen. Hi, Elika. Hi, Daphne, Eva, Angelica, good to meet you. As if you were just joining now, I was just saying that I would love for you to confirm that you can still or again hear me and see me. And that's maybe a little bit about where you are. I'll see if it works when I start to share this screen. Uh, and we'll get started straight away so I don't take up too much of your day. So, let's go like this. Yes, here we are. Ooh. So, welcome. <laughs> Finally, I'm gonna like not look straight into, what? Uh, in, uh, I'm gonna, gonna just look into the technical stuff. Um, and uh, I just want to start by thanking you for spending your time and your energy here with me today. I'm really happy that you decided to do so. And I hope that you will learn something uh, in that in one way or the other might change your life, even if just for a very tiny bit. And I will definitely do my best to give you value for your, your time and also try to bring some positive energy to your day, even if I'm not in focus. So warm welcome once again. So just before we start, I uh, just want to quickly go through the framework for this event. And as you see, uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit in the beginning. Uh, so if you're on your mat, you can grab a pillow or somewhere to sit down and get comfy. And then um, after that, uh, I will, yeah, I will talk a little bit in the beginning, <laughs> some a bit of an introduction. Then we'll go through a bit about Vinyasa flow, how you can um, some stuff that you can do in your practice to get more out of your yoga practice. 
And then you have the opportunity to flow with me for about 15 minutes. And then I will start uh, to talk a little bit about how you can continue your journey. So does that sound okay for everybody? I hope so. If so, I want to start, I just want to address very shortly uh, a little bit about why I'm doing this. It's, well, I'm uh, very, very passionate about yoga. And the reason for that is that it's really changed my life. And I see the way that it changes the life of my students, like all the time. And I just feel that I want to uh, give more people the opportunity uh, to have that kind of experience. And I want to share some of the tricks and some stuff that I found myself that helped me along the way to really get into yoga and really make yoga a great part of my life, something that is a, like a consistent part of my life. And of course, there is also that I have uh, created a program that could help you implement these things and that I talk about in this webinar. And I would like to ask you that if I deliver a lot of valuable content, if it is okay with you that I spend a little bit of time in the end to present this program to you. And please, I would love to have a little yes in the chat. And if you don't want to listen to this, you can of course just log off and continue with your day. Thank you, Claire, that's so nice of you. Thank you so much. And Eva. So. What will you learn today? Uh, I will talk about what Vinyasa flow is and uh, what it can do for you. And since we will be flowing together, you, I think that you will quite quickly uh, understand its magic. And I will also dig in to, on how you can set clear goals for your practice, goals that can support you on your yoga journey. I will teach you how you can create a routine that sticks uh, since, and you will be hearing me saying this over and over again, consistency is the key to, to get the real benefits of yoga and to really bring in those life changes. Uh, so I will also share my best tips on how to get on the mat, or even those days when you don't really feel like it. And then I will talk about how you can more out, get more out of your physical yoga practice some tricks on the mat. And I will also talk about how you can really connect your breath or your movement to your breath rather and create a deep mind-body connection. And before that we will, or when you have, uh, when I've talked about this, you will have the opportunity to flow and then you can implement some of these things that we, I've been talking about. So just a few things that this uh, little session is not. It is not a quick fix. You will not be able to handstand after this webinar. Uh, it's about creating a foundation for you that you can build your yoga practice on. It is not about the history of yoga or yoga philosophy. I'm not gonna dig into the eight limbs of yoga or any Sanskrit uh, stuff during this webinar. And just let's be completely clear that there is no shortcut to becoming strong and flexible. It really takes time. And of course it does take, take consistency more than anything. Uh, if there is one thing that you should take with you from this webinar, it is that consistency is the key. And also in order to be consistent, you need to have uh, set a goal. You need to create a habit. You need to have support and a clear plan for your success. So I, I just wanted to say that um, 15 or 20 minutes of yoga every day is better than doing two hours once a week. It will give you more of the benefits. And in the end, it's up to you to do your practice to get the results from the stuff that I speak about. No one else can do it but you. So a little short introduction of me, uh, who am I and why am I here to talk to you about this? Uh, never a dancer, never a gymnast. This is the way I like to think about myself. I'm Emily. I'm 42 years old from Sweden and I have two daughters. They're eight and 10 and I have a bonus daughter and I have a husband who supports me in everything I do. I've been working as a UI UX designer for the past 15 years in large companies like Sony Ericsson, Huawei, 
And I've, so I've been into the corporate world for a very, very long time. And when I grew up, I was into horses. I basically did no other workout uh, until I went to college and I started to do some group training like aerobics and steps in the 90s. My, my yoga journey started back in 1999 when I read in the Swedish Elle magazine about Madonna turning 40 that year. And the article said that she did yoga every day. And I thought she looked amazing for 40. And that led me to going out to the local shop for meditation books and crystals and getting myself a good old yoga video on VHS, exactly this one as you see on the image, with Maxine Tobias and her male friend doing some sort of a hatha yoga. And so I started to doing yoga in my living room. I don't want any notifications. Um, and uh, for a very long time, yoga was a part of my life, something that I did as a complement to other training, other workouts. And then eventually I became a body balance teacher and I did that for a few years. But in 2012, we moved to a smaller village and I was pregnant with my second daughter. And then I, in that village, I couldn't teach body balance anymore. And the same year I had my daughter and two years later, I was in this state of this image. I had two small children. I was working full time, constantly feeling tired. I was crashing on the couch every evening after putting the girls to sleep. And I felt that there was never enough of me. And I was struggling so hard to be present and to be there for everybody who needed me. And I had absolutely no time, no energy for myself, for self-care. Even if I realized that the lack of self-care was just pulling me further and further down uh, this low energy spiral. So uh, can if tell me uh, in the chat if this is something that you can relate to, maybe working too much or having little to, to little less time for yourself. I'd like to see if you understand this feeling. Are you here? <laughs> oh yes, yeah. Sometime in 2015, however, I was trying to pull myself together. I was browsing workout inspiration on Pinterest and I found this photo of Keena McGregor when she's doing what is called a handstand scorpion. And I was completely blown away. I had never seen anything like this except for on the circus. I was not even aware of that this was yoga whatsoever. But the feeling I got was that I also want to do this. I definitely am going to do this. But at that time, I could not hold a handstand for maybe, I don't know, a minute, no, or like a second or two seconds. I could absolutely not be in my handstand. I can absolutely not put my feet on my head. But this was my, the start of my modern yoga journey. Uh, I, at that time, I just found, I realized that this was connected to vinyasa flow, which was more dynamic yoga than I had been doing before. And I was got into a found of you near a flow class um, in a yoga studio nearby. I was immediately hooked. It felt like coming home. I just couldn't realize how I had never before moved like that because I was so amazed by the combination of strength and flexibility, of gracefulness. It was almost like a dance, but super strong. It was for me a completely new way of moving and I was amazed. So I had my goal set, uh, but it was very, very far away. So what I started to do was that I started to practice strong vinyasa flows in my living room. Uh, I've been practicing at home basically all the time because it's hard to go to a studio several times a week. With I still had the children, you know, and the full-time job. So I practiced at home in my living room, slowly building strength and flexibility. And I did some drills, of course, to practice the handstand. But I mean, you cannot practice a handstand for two hours every day. It's going to ruin your wrist. So vinyasa flows is such a great foundation to build deep strength, stamina, and flexibility, if you give it the time and the dedication. So, and it's also, it's called a yoga practice for a reason, because it is so much more than your regular workout. It is about continuously learning. There is no finish line. You're never done. It's never perfect. It's always um, practice over perfection. 
and there's always a little higher to climb. And that's what I really love about it, that it's, there's always something more to discover. So this is where I am right now. And um, I, as I said, 2015, could barely kick up to a handstand. So how did I do this? I set a clear goal for myself. Uh, the goal was actually in 2016, I decided to do yoga for 300 days during that year. And uh, I mapped out a clear path. I invested in programs that brought me forward. So I had a clear path every day, something that I knew I could do. Otherwise, I would have been ending up just browsing on YouTube and never finding the right thing to do. And I also found some good instructors that I really felt was the ones that could help me forward. And I understood eventually the, the power since I set the goal of doing yoga for a long time, many, many, many days in a row. I, that made me understand the power of consistency because I noticed changes in my body and also changes in my mind when I had done yoga for many days in a row. And I also understood the importance of a supportive community because and not exactly then, but just a while after that, I went into Instagram and then I found a lovely community and I realized that when you have people around you, you can get inspired and they help you forward and you learn new things and you, your, their problems can relate to your and you can share experiences. And as I said, I invested in good guides and uh, then eventually I took a yoga teacher training a couple of years after that and I started my own studio, which is where I am right now. And I also started my online yoga business, a monthly membership, a YouTube channel, some other stuff around yoga that I do. And sometimes I ask myself, where would I have been if what have happened if I hadn't found Vinyasa Flow at the time that I did? Maybe I would have been overweight. Um, I would have most likely been pretty stressed out because I was in a very stressed state at that time. And I might have been mentally unhealthy without a tool that could help me deal with anxiety and sad thoughts. Because I did suffer from uh, those. I was, since I, I said, I felt that there was never enough of me. And, you know, I was so stressed. It felt like I just wanted to disappear to make all of the stuff I had to do go away. Uh, but my yoga practice uh, has given me a channel, a tool to channel these feelings and move. When I start to move and breathe, it really helps me find purpose and really helps me find a calm inside. And I see that in so many of my students. And when you find that, when you all of a sudden you have yoga as a tool for your own health and for your well-being. It actually happened to me yesterday. I was my I have a brother who is turning 40 today. And I was super, I was working so hard by, because he lives in Berlin, so I cannot see him. And me and my other brother, we've been working so hard and I was doing so much work around creating a video for him, like a celebration video. And it took me all day and I was super stressed because I had so many other things to do. And at the end of the day, I really felt like, oh, I can't wait to get on my mat and really get this, you know, to just reset everything and get started uh, all over again because that is what the tool what yoga is to me right now so the first step a little bit of tea um what is vinyasa flow good question um, let's see if we can make this play vinyasa flow is a style of yoga that is characterized by connecting poses together so you that you move from one to the other seamlessly and you create a flow and most vinyasa classes they offer like a great variety of poses and the opposite of that is the more fixed style classes for example bikram yoga or ashtanga yoga where you have a set number of poses that you do every time and that variable nature of vinyasa flow uh, it's great because it develops like a more balanced body and also you suffer less from injuries that you can get from repeating the same uh, movements uh, day after day and the word vinyasa the sanskrit word vinyasa actually means to place in a specific way and that kind of tells us that we're not just throwing our bodies around on the mat but you bring consciousness into each and tiny little movement on your mat 
And vinyasa flow is characterized by movement. You move in and out of poses and it's very dynamic. It's very active. It's often sweaty. And one thing that really makes it different to other kinds of yoga is that the transitions are equally in importance to the actual pose. So you actually, you are um, super present and conscious even in the pose, but also in between the poses. Those little spaces in between the poses, they're equally important to the actual pose. And that is a little bit different when you compare it to Hatha and so on. And uh, since Vinyasa flow is, uh, is very creative and versatile, it's, um, the experience you have is very much depending on the teacher that you have, because the teacher decides the sequence, the teacher decides the pace of where, what you're doing. And uh, the vinyasa flow is also a breath initiated movement, meaning that you move with your breath. So you try to use your breath to create the movement kind of, I will show you. And the breathing technique that we use is called ujjayi breathing. I'm not going to go into the details of that today. And uh, if it's in, this is your the beginning of your yoga journey, you don't need to really think about like uh, using the ujjayi breathing or even just, you don't even have to follow your breath at all if it's too much to think about. But eventually it will come. And eventually you might start to wonder what that ujjayi breathing is and you want to start to implement it. But all in its time. So I'm actually going to step onto the mat. I'm going to take off some of uh, my knitted and I'm just going to show you some stuff. And then I will encourage you to also step onto your mats. Let's see if I'm going to stop sharing so you can see a bit more of me, hopefully. Yes, still not in focus, but that does seems to be what we, how we're working today. Yeah. So, I, sorry, I'm just going to change my little focus here. So, yes, I'm on the mat. The first thing that I want to encourage you in order to start to um, get more out of your yoga practice, I'm just going to go through three of my, my best tips, I would say. And the first one is to start to have a core activation. And I don't mean um, that you need to like, squeeze your core like crazy all the time. Uh, that might even be bad for you. But try to have a little bit of activation, at least in your exhales. Because when you have that little stability in drawing your navel up and back towards your spine, then you create a stability all around your core. And that will also transform into a more active rest of your body. And it's also a great uh, way to have a focus point, somewhere to keep your focus. And it's also a great way to prevent, if you're like very low, not core active, you might start to hang in your lower back and you get, so just having that little squeeze, tucking the tail slightly and just moving from that point of, of control will give you so much more stability in your practice. It also is gonna create much more you're going to get a stronger core, of course, and also it's going to create uh, a more, you're going to be more active in the rest of your movement as well. And let's scroll up so I don't forget anything. Um, my second tip is to you use very slow and graceful movements. I'm going to start to talk more about this when I just go through the breath to movement. But uh, I often see, you know, let's say you're in downward facing dog and I tell my students like uh, sweep your right leg up and they look, do like this. And then I say like pull your knee to your chest and they do like this. So what I want to encourage you in order to really create that mind-body connection is to use very slow and graceful movement using the entire breath to move. So I doubt that most there are that many people that inhale is like, <laughs> you know, most people have, at least we encourage in yoga them to have a strong, but quite slow, almost like four seconds in, four seconds out breath. So I want to encourage you to start moving with grace, 
slowly and control because when you do you need to spend so much more time figuring out where your limbs are in space and when you do that that is when you create the mind body connection then because when you move your foot up very slowly you need to kind of feel where it is in space <clears throat> you need to figure out is it here is it here where is the difference and that is super good for creating good mind-body connection. And also, there has been studies now saying that if you have a muscle that is uh, less flexible, it is often due to lack of mind-body connection. Because it's hard to connect. If you want to make have more flexibility in a muscle, you need to make it longer, but preferably also stronger. So... But you need to find that muscle with your mind. And sometimes it can help by, you know, you can actually poke your muscles to wake up those, that connection to your brain. Because sometimes when that connection hasn't been used for a while, it's like a closed road, you know. You have to unblock it and say, tell your brain like, hey, there's this one. I want to work with this muscle today. So that is something that I really want to encourage you to do. The same comes for like, you know, just sweeping your arms up. Try to, next time you do it, try to do it like with grace, like you really mean it. Sweeping your arms up and then bringing your palms in front of your heart, like you really mean it. And the second or the third one that I want to talk about is of course, as I mentioned, the transitions to make them equally important as the pose. So every time you go, let's go for this again. If every time you want to go, let's go for, this is three-legged downward facing dog, and you want to step your foot forward, then you bring it into your chest and you create as much space as you can between your knee and the mat, gaze in between your hands, and then you release your foot and then maybe go into the warrior two, releasing the sole of the back foot. Sweep your arms up, finding the pose. So all the time, use the transitions. Don't like rush them. Use them and make them equally important to the final pose. And the next one I want to address, there are a lot now, so I know it's going to be you don't, when we go into the flow, you can choose one or two, depending on how much yoga you've been doing, that you want to implement if it's too crazy. But the next one I want to address is uh, what I call dynamic stretching. Because it's very easy. I think we've all been stretching in our life, you know, at gym class or something. And it's easy. Let's say this is a typical stretch. We also do it in yoga, where we call it half split. But it's very easy just to hang here and like pretend you feel a bit of stretch on the backside maybe, and you're like, yeah, it feels good. But if you really want to, as I said, if you really want to create a sustainable uh, flexibility, you need to make the muscle not only longer, but also stronger. So you need to find activation. If you want to be more flexible in your hamstrings, you need to find a way to activate your hamstrings. And also, it's very good to work the opposing muscle. In this case, would be the hip flexor, the one that lifts your leg to the front, and the hamstring moves your leg to the back. So, if you're next time you're in this stretch, I want you to pull your toes towards your upper body. And at the same time, I want you to press down through your heel and pretend that you're trying to pull your heel in towards your knee. You can have a long, beautiful spine and fold, but see what that does when you really press down through your heel and pull it in. It's gonna fire up the backside and that is gonna be so much more effective than just hanging here and doing a bit of a stretching because when you do that, just hanging stretch is gonna be good for the upcoming five minutes and then the next time it, it's gonna be, you're gonna go back to where you were before. So dynamic stretching. I had one more exercise in that. 
Which one? Yes, exactly. It's the same if you, I'm going to do hamstrings again. The same if you lie down, you're going to do like a hamstring stretch like this. Start off by pulling the leg as close to your upper body as you can using, in this case, you're going to use the opposite, the posing muscle, the hip flexor to pull that your leg close. And at the same time, you're going to find the stretch on the hamstring. And then when you have reached your stop here, this is your end point, then you can start to grab somewhere on the leg and start to get a more of a stretch. But start off by really just using the muscles to pull the leg in. And, <laughs> and the final thing that I want to show on the mat today is a little trick around how you can create, uh, connect your movement to your breath, because that is what we want to do when we do a vinyasa flow. And uh, maybe you haven't noticed it, but if you've done a vinyasa flow, it is actually most of the times we move, like when we move upwards, we breathe in. And when we move down, we kind of bring our head down towards the mat that's when we breathe out. So it's almost like, I'm thinking like it's around by when you're in the water, you need to go up to breathe in air and then you can dive down. For, exactly, for example, if you go into a vinyasa, we move down, uh, exhale, and then we inhale when we move up and then we exhale when we go down. But there are some tricks on how to create, really make that your movement controlling, or your breath controlling the movement rather, rather than the opposite. And the trick is that you, when you start to breathe, and then you plan to start to move, you start your inhale just like a microsecond before you start to move. So if I was about to sweep my arms up, I'm gonna start my inhale and then I start the movement. And that means that when I'm at the top of my breath, that's when my palms touch. And then I start to exhale and then I start to move my hands in between in front of my chest. And at the bottom of my breath, this is where my hands land. If you tend to do the other way around, you start to move and then you start to breathe. Then you're gonna notice it's gonna be your movement that is controlling the breathing. And that means that you maybe it's like you move too fast and you're, you don't get in enough breath or your breath becomes very <clears throat> too shallow or too fast paced. And so it's a very good, it's a very tiny, but very effective trick to actually find that movement to breath connection. So try it. And I give, this is when you have the chance to actually try it because uh, I will invite you to the mat. I'm gonna just bring up my little cheat sheet. So get yourself ready if you are very comfy. <laughs> Maybe you're still very comfy and you just want to watch, perfectly fine. But if you want to join me, it's gonna be about a 15 minute flow. I would love for you to try it. It's not gonna be very complicated, but we're gonna move and it's gonna be active, of course, since it's a vinyasa flow. So let's just meet at the top of our mats. Bring your feet together and bring your big toes to touch and find a little space in between your heels. Slightly tuck your tail, roll down your shoulder blades down the back. Bring your palms to face the front and then just maybe close down your eyes for just a tiny moment. Feel your feet grounding down towards the earth. And at the same time, try to lift up through the crown of your head, standing really tall. And then start to lift your navel up and back towards your spine, just 
finding that slight core engagement. Lift your kneecaps, not to overstretch your knees. And then open your eyes and inhale, sink deep into your hips, sweep your arms up, finding chair pose. Squeeze your knees together and see, just so you can see a tiny bit of your toes in front of your knees. Try to squeeze your pinky fingers just in slightly. Tuck your tail just a tiny bit. Squeeze your core. And then on the next inhale, come high up onto your toes. Press your heels to the top of the mat. Deep core engagement. Inhale. Exhale. One more inhale. And then let the next exhale, lower the heels down, folding all the way down, dropping the crown of the head down towards the mat. Shake it out, maybe bending your knees a little bit, just shake out. Maybe this is the first movement you do today. Lift your navel up towards your spine. Inhale and plant your fingertips to the mat and sweep your left leg back. Yes, the left one, <laughs> crazy. And then as you exhale, start bending into your right knee. Slowly drop your left toes to the back. Plant your palms underneath your shoulders. Lift your right toes or foot up towards your upper body. And then inhale, sweep that right leg all the way up and back. Three-legged downward facing dog. Inhale. Stay for the exhale. Press the mat away. Just see that your hands are shoulder width apart. Inhale for length along your right leg, and then exhale, come high up onto your left toes, draw your right knee in towards the chest. Inhale all the way up and back. Exhale, round in, really round your spine, press the mat away. Once more, inhale, straight leg back, exhale, round in. Inhale, press the mat away, gaze in between your hands, and as you exhale, lower your right foot in between your hands, bend into your right knee, and lower the sole of the left foot. Sweep your arms up, warrior two, sinking deep into your hips. Make sure that your right knee doesn't fall in, but press it out towards the pinky toe edge of your right foot. Open your hips to the side of the mat, maybe gazing out over your right fingertips. Let the next inhale, sweep the right arm up, lowering your left hand to the your left leg, stay for the exhale, sink deep. Inhale, stretch tall throughout your right fingertips. And then exhale, lower your right elbow to your right thigh. Sweep the left arm up and over. See if you can find a beautiful line from your left foot to your left fingertips. Really stretch tall. Next inhale, sweeps you all the way back. And exhale into extended side angle. Once more, reverse the warrior, inhale, and exhale, extended side angle, and stay. Inhale, release your right arm from the thigh, palms face each other, pretend you have a big ball to hold on to. Squeeze your core, hold it. One more inhale, and then exhale it to warrior two. Let the inhale, circle the left arm down and come to your left toes into high lunge. Both feet point forward, hip point forward, lower your hips down, pressing out through your left heel. Inhale, stand tall and exhale, hands in front of your heart, leaning over your right thigh and just spring to the top of the mat, maybe small steps, maybe one big, into warrior three. Flex the left foot, bring your left toes to point down, find length with your inhale from the crown of your head to the sole of your left foot. And exhale, firmly press down through your right foot. Inhale, sweep your arms up and bring your left knee in towards your chest, stand tall. Exhale, bring your right palm to the outside of your left thigh, sweeping your left arm back. Inhale, press down through the sole of your right foot. Stand super tall and let the exhale find a little bit more depth in your rotation. Don't forget to lift the navel to the spine. Inhale, circle the left arm all the way up and 
to the ceiling and exhale, hands in front of your heart. Swim your left leg back, warrior three. One inhale and exhale, super slow. Lower your left toes to the back of the mat. Lower the left knee down, sweep your arms up. Inhale and exhale, frame that front foot straighten into your right leg. Draw your toes towards your upper body, lift halfway, meaning you create a long back, sticking your sitting bones up. And then exhale, gently fold over your right leg. And use this time to try to press the heel down, pull it in towards the back knee. See what that does to the engagement of your right hamstring. Next inhale, bend back into your right knee, fingertips to the outside of the mat and heel toe your right foot over to the left side of the mat. Lower your shin down, untuck your left toes, roll your left hip down towards the mat, lift the chest, use the core to create stability. Inhale and exhale, fold. Roll it back up with an inhale, lift the chest and exhale, fold down. Once more, up all the way. And exhale, folding down and stay. Find your position here. If this is with your palms to the mat, stay here. Maybe you want to climb down to your forearms. Wherever you're at, see if you can find a place where you can feel something and try to work into that area using your breath. Like you're sending your breath to that area where you find that you hold a lot of tension. So really work into it, rolling the hip down. And then let the next inhale lift you back up. Place the, your weight into your right glute and swing your left leg forward into Navasana. You can have your knees in a 90, your legs rather in a 90 degree. So try to lift your chest, bring your arms forward, palms facing, use your core. And then inhale, lower down to low boat. Find activation through your legs. Press your lower back down. Exhale, bring it up. Navasana. Inhale down. Exhale, bring it up. Inhale to lower. Exhale, bring it back up. Lower down. And up. Last one. Down. And up. Grab hold of the back of your thighs. Plant your feet down. Widen between your legs. See if you can come up. Lean forward, round of the spine, and come all the way up, plant your palms. Step your feet back, our first high plank. We're gonna do the little sequence that is called A vinyasa. So shift your weight forward, inhale, exhale, lower down, either with your knees down or on your toes, but keep your elbows in. Inhale to upward facing dog, no legs in the mat, press the mat away, and exhale, to downward facing dog, great work. That was first side, right side, inhale, come to your toes, gaze in between your hands, bend your knees and step or jump. However you feel like getting there to the top of the mat. Lift halfway with an inhale and exhale, fold. Let the inhale sweep your arms up, gaze up and see your palms touch. Exhale, hands in front of your heart, Using the breath as the guide for the movement. Inhale, sweep your arms, finding chair pose, sinking deep, checking the toes. Oops, forgot to heel toe my feet together. So bring your big toes to touch, press your knees together, and then inhale to your toes. Sink a little bit deeper to challenge yourself. Sink your shoulder blades down the back. Press your knees, press your inner thighs together. One more inhale. And then exhale, folding all the way down. Shake it out, bending into your legs, any kind of movement that you feel like. And then fingertips to the mat. Inhale, sweeps the right leg up, gaze forward, halfway lift with the upper body. Exhale, drop your right toes to the back, plant the palms, left knee towards the chest, and sweep your left leg all the way up and back, three-legged downward facing dog. Stay here for one inhale to find length. And then exhale, bring your left knee towards the chest. Come as high upon you as your 
you count on your right heels. Heel, toes, inhale, up and back. Exhale, round forward. Use the core here, inhale, exhale it forward. Stay for the inhale to create space. Exhale, lower the left foot. Be in between your hands, lower the sole of the right foot, and then windmill your arms to warrior two. Take one deep breath here, and see if you also here can find some sort of a new activation. So try to pull your feet together. At the same time, try to sink deeper into your hips. That means we have one force pulling up and then another force pressing you down, creating a shaking feeling in your legs. Inhale, reverse the warrior, left arm sweeps up towards the ceiling. Stay for the exhale. Inhale, stretch a little bit taller through your left fingertips. Exhale, left hand to your left thigh, right arm sweeps up and over. Beautiful line between your right hand and your right foot. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, extended side angle. Inhale, reverse. Use your core, keep it active. Exhale, extended side angle. Last one, sweep it up. Exhale, extend it and stay. Release your left hand from the thigh. Keep it super hard. Time to activate the legs. Inhale and exhale, warrior two. Inhale, circle your right arm down. Come to your right toes, high lunge, inhale. Sink deep with an exhale. Inhale, stretch your hands tall towards the ceiling. Exhale, hands in front of your heart, spring to the top. Warrior three, lift your right leg, flex your right toes, right foot, point the toes down, inhale, and stay for the exhale. Next inhale, bring your right knee to the chest, sweep your arms up, and exhale, rotate to the right, right hand back, left hand to the outside of your right thigh. Maybe you can gaze out over your right hand, Inhale, stay for the exhale and see if you can deepen the rotation. Next inhale, circle the right arm all the way down, both arms up. Exhale, hands in front of your heart, swing it back, warrior three. One inhale for length and one exhale to slowly find the back of the mat. Lower your right knee down, sweep your arms up, super tall. Exhale, fingertips to the mat, straighten your left leg, draw your toes to the upper body, lift halfway, long, beautiful spine and fold. Keep your core engaged. Once more, try to find engagement down through the heel, pull it back, keep it active. See if your leg starts to shake. One more breath. And inhale, then back into your left knee. Heel to the left foot to the right side of the mat, lower the shin. Untuck your right toes. Bring your fingertips to the outside of the mat. Inhale, lift the chest and exhale, bow down. Use your core to roll up with an inhale and exhale, fold. Once more, rolling up. And this time, exhale all the way down to where you found your spot the last time. If it was forearms to the mat or palms to the mat, mat just find your place. Maybe close down your eyes, work into your hips. See if you can use your breath to release any tension, just slowly, slowly. Just sending your breath to the areas where you find stickiness, where you hold a lot of tension. Next inhale, brings you back up. Lean into your left glute, swing your right leg forward. Going for that last little Navasana set, the low boat, high boat, arms forward, lift the chest, engage your legs, maybe spread your toes, keep them active, and then inhale to low boat. Exhale, high. Inhale, low. 
exhale. Inhale, low, straighten your legs. Exhale, up. Inhale, keep your legs active. Exhale. Last one. Down and up. Hold. Bring your feet down. Roll forward. Plant the palms. Step or jump back into high plank. Find it your way. Inhale, shift the weight forward. Come high up onto your toes. Keep this, your legs super active. Halfway down, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog, and exhale to downward facing dog. Take one deep breath. Just stay and notice your heartbeat. Notice how it feels in your body, the heat that you created. Inhale, come to your toes, gaze in between your hands, jump or step to the top of the mat. Hands to your shins and lift halfway. Inhale, lift the navel to the spine. Exhale to fold. Next inhale, sweeps your arms all the way up. See your palms touch. Exhale, release your hands in front of your heart. Beautiful. So, whew, I hope you got warm. I got warm. <laughs> As it always as always, with a vinyasa flow. Ah, you see, you get the yoga glow straight away. <laughs> and I'm not in focus when I'm there. So funny. So find your way back to your comfortable. You're not going to get a nice shavasana, unfortunately. But find your way back to where you were before, a comfortable seat. And I will just share some of my tricks. I'm going to share my screen again and we're going to get back to the oh, yes there it is so what can vinyasa flow, flow, flow do for you if you ask me i think it's the best full body exercise it challenges your strength your flexibility the stamina you work with static holes you work with dynamic movement and you get a you have a cardiovascular component that gets your heart rate up uh, it is a moving meditation since we move through a sequence most of the times we move through a sequence like this maybe repeated times or i add on as i as a teacher i add on things to my sequence but there will be repetition and the repetition is good because it really helps you get into that movement you really get to know your body. And also when you start to know where you're going, you can really create that an amazing uh, moving meditation, a feeling of flowing. And that is what I aim for in all my classes. And also, as I talked about before, your mat becomes your uh, sanctuary. Uh, when you've had a rough day, your mat is there for you. And um, it, is, it, is, it becomes in some magical way a place where you allow yourself to feel and move and be present with yourself. And also you learn that your mat is always there for you. It's yoga is always there for you. It helps you through your rough times and it lets you play uh, in your happy, when you're happy days. And uh, it is a sustainable practice for the rest of your life. I consider vinyasa yoga to be something that I plan to do for the rest of my life. And maybe, of course, I might not be able to do the most super advanced poses, but I have seen so much proof of that if you, once again, come back to the consistency, if you never stop, then you can actually do so much just when you keep doing it, like day after day, you just keep going and having yoga as your daily practice. So that means to me, it is something that I plan to do for a very long time. And also the way that you move in yoga, when you move with such focus and such body control, it really is a great way to prevent injury. Let's see if I can see you. So let's just uh, talk about how you can get started on your yoga journey, how you can really reap the benefits and uh, uh, it is, of course, the consistency, and to be consistent, it's very good to set a clear goal. 
So why should you set a goal? Because a goal gives you focus. It gives you something to work towards and to keep your mind on. It also helps you to measure progress. I think that we all can agree on that when you notice progress, when you all of a sudden have learned something, that is a fantastic feeling. And if you have a goal, you have something to work towards and you can measure your progress towards that goal. A goal will also help you stay motivated. We all have those days when we feel tired or less motivated. But if you've set a goal for yourself, for example, that you're going to do yoga for, let's say, 60 days in a row, then you have something to motivate you because you don't want to let yourself down. When I had this 300 day of the year yoga goal, it happened that we were like traveling and we were visiting friends and we're staying over in some small guest room and there was no place for me to do yoga. I remember I was like going out on their lawn with a mat early in the morning before everybody wake woken up because I didn't want to let myself down because I had set the goal. Another smart way to look at goals is to use the SMART goal rule. And SMART stands for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. So here is my example, like starting May 23rd, I'm gonna practice yoga 20 minutes every day for 60 days to become fit, flexible, and confident enough to dot, dot, dot. You can fill in the blank, the goal, that the blank is the goal behind the goal. So specific here is what you're gonna do. You're gonna do a practice yoga and measurable in you need to include time and dates so you can measure your degree of success so here we have when you're going to start how long it's going to be and uh, attainable means that you shouldn't set a goal that is impossible for you to reach because that will completely demoralize you and it won't be fun but you should also keep yourself from setting a goal that is too easy to reach that you can just do any day because that won't be any challenge either so it's a very fine line of uh, setting a goal that is challenging but still attainable you can actually you could be able to do that and the relevant uh, in this uh, example the relevance is the fit flexible and confident to dot 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 relevant maybe uh, confident enough to apply for that job for us to ask for a raise to quit my job to do something do something completely different, but that's the relevance. It's like the goal behind the goal. And time bound, uh, it is, you should set, it, set the deadline so you know when you have reached the goal or not. And the third step uh, that I want to share is some trip, trips, tricks around how you can stick to a routine. Because when you need to be consistent, you need to make, make yoga a routine, something that you just do in your daily life, like you brush your teeth. And we are gonna talk about the three R's. The first of the three R's is the reminder. Uh, because before the routine has actually become a routine, you need to be reminded that there was something that you were gonna do, that you set a goal to do. And the best thing that you can do around this is to set a reminder to a physical object. So meaning that you don't stick your yoga mat in the cupboard, but keep it out where you can see it. Maybe you cannot have it rolled out, but you can have it rolled up somewhere. If you tend to end up on the couch, keep it rolled up in the couch. That will remind you that you had a yoga goal going. Uh, and also one, uh, another kind of reminder is the more community supported. If you're in a good community and you have with people who maybe have a similar goal to you and you see that they are working towards their goal, that can inspire you to start working towards your goal as well. The second part of the routine is the actual action. And when it comes to this part, it's very important not just to have a clear goal, but also have a clear path. So you know what to do every day. So you don't end up on the couch in, with your iPad trying to find a good yoga video on YouTube and you find one zillion results and you start doing one and you don't like it. You need to have a set goal, like a practice calendar or something. You've decided that you're gonna do like a schedule to do every day. That would make it so much easier to create the routine and to reach the goal. And the final R is the reward. You should uh, create a reward for yourself and decide on the reward 
uh, beforehand. So not after, but when you start to set all of this up, you should decide what the reward is. And if the reward is like having a big piece of chocolate, go for that or a, a glass of wine or a cheese or a massage. Just the important thing is that it may, it should, for, to you, it should feel like a reward, something that you really want. And you should feel like, yay, I get this because I did this. But set the reward first. And so my favorite tricks uh, on how to get on the mat when during the days when it's a bit tough. And this is a typical example of how my practice can look. It's uh, dark outside. I live in Sweden most of the year. It's pretty dark. I used to do my yoga practice uh, after I put my kids to bed. So uh, it's, it took a, takes, often takes a lot of, um, how you call, I, I really have to push myself to get on the mat sometimes. Even though I know it's good for me, even though I know I'm going to love it afterwards, it can still be hard those days when you're really tired and you've been half asleep. So the first one is, of course, the goal, the routine and the path. It all makes it so easier, especially the path. If you know what you're going to do every day, it's just going to make it so much easier to just do it. And the second one is to invest in an outfit that you really love. Just invest in something. Don't use your like the old baggy um, trousers if you don't if you don't feel uh, amazing in them. But try to invest in an outfit that you can put on and you can feel like, yeah, I love this. I feel amazing like this. And uh, also, I want to add to this, since we're doing yoga, invest in a good mat because there is huge difference. Sometimes if you have a cheap, uh, like more crappy mat, it will just, oh, it will go, you will go sliding all over. You will have to just spend so much time focusing on not sliding around in your downward facing dog. And that will keep your focus away from the actual, what, what I want to, you to feel in your yoga practice. So a good mat is well worth the investment. And then when you have your outfit and your mat, you put on your clothes and then you tell yourself that you're just going to do some stretching. And <laughs> because you have to trick yourself, you know, sometimes when you sometimes I feel like, oh, I really don't want to be like in uh, doing core work right now. I'm just too tired. And then I trick myself. I'm just saying to myself, oh, I'm just going to do a bit of stretching. Just going to get moving. Just do some twists. It's going to be cozy, cozy. But then when I got on onto the mat, it's rolled out, I started to move, and then all of a sudden I'm like, yeah, okay, but now I'm here, let's just go start doing it. Keep going. And have an inspiring community. It is so important. I'm running a few memberships, and it's amazing how people inspire each other. They don't know each other, but when, when they post that they have been practicing, then the other person gets inspired. And it's the same for me in my community. I just, when a person posts something or tr I see someone trying something, I just get so inspired. And the days, also the days when I am, when I have a, I have a low inspiration, I can just browse, I, you know, I was saved on some nice flows that really inspires me, inspires me in the way the people move. And I watch them and then I, it just makes it so much easier to step on the mat. <clears throat> And the last one is to apply the five second rule, which is a super simple rule created by an amazing woman who is called Mel Robbins. And it's super simple and it's, um, uh, it works like this. It's, uh, imagine you put your kids to bed and you've had a tough day or you just had a tough day. Maybe you don't have any kids and you've ended up on the couch and your brain says to you, you're gonna, you should go up and do some yoga. But your feeling is like, oh no, I'm just too tired. I cannot do it. And the, in this rule, it's like the feeling, what you feel you cannot control, but what happens after that is what you can control. You, when you decide to take action or what do you decide to think after you felt the feeling. So what you do when you felt the feeling, then you count backwards from five, five, two, four, <laughs> three, two, one, if you can count back, yeah. Uh, and then, you just decide to take action. Super simple, but it absolutely works. If you want to look up Mel Robbins, do that. She has great stuff all over the internet.
So, five, four, three, two, one, and let's do it. And I want you to remember, uh, first of all, uh, these were the five steps that I wanted you to come here and take with you today. First step, start with Vinyasa Flow. It's a great way to move. It's a fantastic way, it's so much fun, so playful. I just encourage everybody out there to start playing again. To have a playful way of moving your body as an adult is fantastic. I've, I do like handstand workshops with people who are way over 50 and they're all amazed of how fun it is to play. So just start playing and allow yourself to fail and laugh at yourself and use pillows or just move any way you like, but start to, Vinyasa flow is a great way to find a playful way of moving. That also brings in a mindful aspect of it. Something where you can actually create that mind-body connection and find presence in your life. And my second one is to set a goal. The third one, to create a clear path and set that routine. And the fourth one is the physical ones, uh, the core engagement, the graceful movements, and um, what else had we? The dynamic stretching to get more out of your practice. You don't need to implement them all at the same time. It's going to be hard, but just think about them and just start to implement one by one. And then the last one, learn how to really move with your breath. But remember, you don't need to be flexible or strong to start with yoga. It's a common misunderstanding that only you need to be flexible to start with yoga. I think that it's more important if you're not flexible to start with yoga. And yoga is more than a regular workout. It works with a unique mind-body connection. And it's called a yoga practice for a reason. It is practice, not perfection. And you always listen into your body where you are today and listening to what your body needs at that moment. And remember that you are responsible for your own physical and mental health. Nobody else but you. So, hmm. how are you feeling on the other side? Are you, are you there with me? Do you feel that you have uh, learned something of value today, that I have added something into your, your practice or to just maybe to your life, something that you can think about. So I would love for you to, <laughs> to interact with me and maybe give me a little yes in the chat if that is okay. Lovely, <laughs> thank you. So I'm gonna start to just present my program now and uh, I'm gonna try to keep it quite brief. Just start to uh, what, what I could, <laughs> thank you Claire. So this is what I believe about you, just my assumptions. I think that you, uh, like me, have a busy schedule, maybe finding it hard to prioritize your health. Maybe you feel like you're getting older and less flexible every day. Pretty natural to feel like that. Maybe you're struggling with stress and maybe you have a hard time to relax. But I think that you also know that if you found a workout that you loved, that where you could like see and feel real results and that you will really enjoy doing, I think that you understand that that would completely change your life. Not just like you will become very fit and very flexible and age in a more nice way, maybe have less pain in your body as you age, but also it might affect your mind, make you more, uh, even more in a more harmonious way, being more present, finding a deeper sense of purpose in your life. So I have created the program, the Modern Yogi Master Program. And this is an eight week yoga program. So it's about 60 days. And uh, it includes a daily practice, of course, uh, every day except for one day per week. This is your rest day. And uh, it's, uh, it also includes weekly workshops. So the goal for you when you take part in this program is that you, when you've finished it, you're going to feel that yoga, you have a consistent yoga practice and yoga is a consistent part of your life and that you are a yogi because even if it sounds silly, but it's, it is a specific when you just like, you're the person who brings your mat everywhere and 
you just do yoga because you, you know that it, it makes you feel amazing. And of course, uh, there are many benefits of this program and uh, uh, it's a clear path to get stronger and more flexible than ever before. Because it's a very set schedule that you're gonna do every day and all you're doing these weeks. You will also be learning automatically how to be more present in your daily life. You will have improved physical strength that will, that will in, say, in uh, its way boost your confidence and make you grow in all your areas in life, in your work area, in your family area, in your personal space. Because that is something that is magic with physical strength, that it really makes you strong in other areas than just the physical strength. You will also feel less stressed and you will learn how to take time to relax. So some of the practicalities around this program. It's eight weeks and we start the 23rd of May, exactly. And the 23rd of May, we're gonna have a live class and the meet and greet. So first we do a class and then we have a, a nice group session where we talk to each other and hang out and see who everybody else is. And during these eight weeks, there will be five live classes and they're gonna be on the Sundays of week one, three, five, seven and eight. Yes. And as I said, you will also have a workshop every week and this is it's, it's recorded and you can watch it any time that you like but in the workshop i'll talk a little bit more what it is actually later just go through this first yeah one one step at a time you will have a daily yoga class and the, the yoga classes you will get is about 20 minutes some are 30 minutes uh, depending they're like most 30, 20 minutes a week a little bit more than what we did here this was about 15 minutes i think but as you saw, and I hope you experienced it too, it doesn't take much more than 15 minutes to build up a sweat and feel that you have been moving. And the classes are actually unique. So there are unique classes every day. And on your rest day, you get either a yoga nidra or a meditation, a guided meditation by me. So this is what you can do on your rest day. That also yoga nidra is the yogic sleep. So it's a deep way of relaxing. It's amazing. It's like on a guided journey into different, yeah, into a, an environmental journey. It's lovely. <clears throat> and the meditations also, I'm also, uh, I can quickly say that I did a few years back, two more, more than two years back, I did the same thing I did with yoga when I challenged myself to do yoga for many, many days in a row. I did that with meditation and that led to me having a constant meditation practice for until for since then so i have been meditating every day for more than two years now and that means i just get up really early before my family and i meditate for 30 minutes now every day so but i started off with 15 and then i went but it's a uh, it's a great uh, it's it's uh, i don't i don't know why i told you but it's a uh, it's a great way to add, add meditation into practice as well because it is fantastic oh i forgot you get, of course, access to a closed Facebook group because community is super important to me. And I want you as participants to inspire each other. And I am there in the group, of course. I'm present all the time. And that is why this program is different to one that you buy for $49 and you stick it into your folder on your computer and you never do it. So I am present. You can ask me stuff. You can send me videos. I will give you feedback. And you also get access to my video library with, where I have more than 50 videos. So, so if you want to do another one, then I, the one I suggest, you can do that. So during a week, this is what you'll do. You have a workshop that you can check out and you have the daily practice and you have a live class every second week where I'll be there live with you and I can get you feedback and help. And you have your the stuff for your rest day, the nidra or the guided meditation. So you have six active days, one rest day, time investment, 20 to 30 minutes a day, because actually there are some uh, one or two longer classes. This program is for you. I created it for you because it's a program that I I wish that I had when I started my yoga journey. Like the clear path to just get really get hooked on yoga. So you will learn vinyasa flow so you can become the person you dream of. Confident, present, kind, and radiant. 
So uh, these are the, the weekly videos. It's the workshop video, the daily practice, and you can watch them whenever it suits you. And of course, the live classes will also be recorded and available for you. And you can practice as much as you want. If you want to practice on your rest day, do that. The library is always available. And I will, the more important thing is that I will hold you accountable and when I will be by your side and see that you go through with this. And here is the short about the video workshop. This is where I try to give you the knowledge that is not always communicated at your regular yoga class, like the breath work, the how to do the vinyasa, the different ways you can do it, how to use different transitions, uh, alignments of poses, or you can get started with arm balances, with inversions, uh, how to use the back bends and work with your back strength to get deeper back bends and get better mobility and get a really super strong back. So these are some of the stuff that I will go through in the workshops and that will really, then you can apply them into your practice and you will understand that learning those, those ex, that extra stuff is just going to take your practice to a new level. And then we have the modern yogi flow, which is the live flow. And as I said, it's the Sundays and we do about a 45 minute live class. Then we'll, after straight after, we just go into a chat and talk and see where everybody is. And of course, it's going to be uh, recorded. And may I'm going to, I'm not going to do exactly the same flow, but I'm going to keep some components so it's going to be easy for you to see the progress. And of course, those group coaching calls. This is what is after the live class. So we're going to use Zoom. And you will be. I will ask you to share things that you have been experienced during since last time we met and uh, you will get coaching on any challenges that you're facing. I will answer your questions and you will also be inspired and you will learn from the group and what they are asking that will give you more knowledge when I answer the, their questions. And maybe you have some tips for them as well when you have experienced something. And the closed Facebook group also, of course, to be inspired, to keep you on track. This is where you're gonna see people posting and you're gonna be inspired to get the mat out, even those days when it's a bit tough. And I am also, of course, present as soon as you post something in the Facebook group, I will try to be there to cheer you on so you feel that there is someone backing you up all the time. So this is your result, what you will have been doing every week. When you're in this program, you will have done yoga every day, except on your rest day. You will have been able to keep track of your practice and you will be inspired and keep pushing yourself forward by me and by the rest of the group. And uh, you will absolutely feel stronger and more flexible every week because that is what happens. It's uh, when you start to work with yoga like this, it is creating so much strength and flexibility. And you will be inspired to challenge yourself and try new stuff in your practice. So just a little short about what my students say. This is Kristen McGee. I've had the privilege to work with her. She's an amazing woman and uh, she's a celebrity yoga and Pilates instructor, trusted wellness coach and author and starring in so many yoga and Pilates videos. And I work with her on Zoom. She lives in New York and she uh, takes uh, private sessions with me. We work on her handstands and her to just to advance her yoga practice. And she has been a yoga teacher since 1997. So I'm super honored that I, I get to work with her. And this is what she says about me. Emily is truly such an, a talented, patient, articulate teacher. Her dedication to her own practice shines through and inspires students to really want to grow and learn and give it their all. She is a yoga fairy. She's full of grace and kindness, as well as strength and determination. I feel her warm presence when we practice together, and I always discover something new in my practice. And this is what Diana says. She's a student of mine. She came to my class, and she wasn't very at all into yoga, actually. <clears throat> but she just finished her doing yoga for 100 days in a row, and she's still going. 
Yoga has become like breathing for me. And the reason is, Emily, I never thought I would be so obsessed, dedicated to practice every day. Considering I tested different yoga instructors, but no one, no one has caught my interest until I visited Emily's studio and participated. Then I was sold. Emily is an extremely dedicated, ambitious, inspiring and challenging yoga instructor who makes me long for yoga every moment in her studio. So if you make the decision to join me for this program today, uh, I have some bonuses for you, of course. You get a year long membership in my monthly, in my monthly me membership program <laughs> uh, valued to $288. So this is a great way to keep going after those eight weeks are finished because then you will keep you in this membership where you will get a weekly yoga schedule. And those, it's a weekly three weeks three classes per week schedule. There is a new class every week in the library. You get full access to the library and you get a, a new closed Facebook group. This is also a great way to keep going. Second bonus is only for the first five and there are actually a few spots left. It's a one hour one-on-one -on -one private session with me and value of $149. This is where you can bring anything that you want to work with, work on to me. You just say what you want to work on and we'll work on that. If it's your handstand or your transitions, how you can become more flexible, it's totally up to you. We have one hour together, but only for the first five. And the last bonus is lifetime access to my chakra class bundle, which is very nice. Seven classes uh, going through the chakras, super nice flows. And also my 14 day core program, which is like core for inversions, amazing ways of working your core. I just put all the, my favorite core exercises that has helped me to level up my practice and become a, super good at handstanding and arm balancing. I took all those core exercises and put them into a 14 day bundle where you have five to eight minutes every day. And it's, gonna, it's hard core work, but it's lovely. The total bonus value, 516. And the price for this, I have bought on and off yoga programs, online, <laughs> offline and online yoga programs for 15 to $20,000. And in order to educate myself, to become a yogi, to learn how to do all of this, and a lot of similar programs to this one that I present to you today, it's about three to $4,000. And the price for this is $2,497. But if you stick with me for a little bit longer here, uh, there will be a better price for you. I promise. So why am I doing this? Once again, it's my passion for yoga. My passion for yoga came from practicing yoga and feeling what it did to my own body and enjoying the progress, enjoying the, how I could how it developed and how what happened to my mind, to my mind-body connection. But now my passion for yoga is... Uh, even more about spreading it to others, to see their progress and to feel and see how their confidence grows as they grow stronger and more flexible. So first yoga changed my life and now I see it changing the life of my students. And to me, that is the most amazing feeling. For example, you have Diana up there to the or left doing her splits. She's about 52 or 53 years old, and this is the first time in her life she's <clears throat> doing the splits. And uh, to me, that is pretty amazing. It makes me feel really happy because I can see how happy and confident it makes her feel. So my passion for yoga is now not only practicing it, but empowering women with yoga. So I have created this program for you. I'm helping women to become the person that they dream of being, being bringing a healthy habits into people's lives and use yoga to make people more confident in all areas of life. So <clears throat> we're getting into the final slides. Uh, if you register now at this webinar, um, you, can know, you can pay $450 for three months, total of $13.50, or you can pay all at once $11.95, and that saves you $153. US dollars. So what you get is the eight-week program. You get live classes. You get the daily practice. Uh, you get workshops and the Facebook group and accountability. You get full access to the library, and you get the bonuses 
the one-on-one -on -one session, the year-long membership, the chakra bundle, and so this is, yeah, exactly. So I'm just gonna put, put the link here. <laughs> Getting back to her, uh, to Mel Robbins and the, the five second rule. Um, I think, giving you the link. So, I'm gonna add a small calculation to this. Dividing 11.97 by 52 weeks of the year, $23 a week. To put it in perspective about what you can get for $23 a week. And where I live, I can get a pretty fancy lunch for $23 a week. But you could also invest that money and go for a life change because it will be a life change because it is a great way to really get started by doing a consistent practice and having all the support that you need for the first eight weeks on your yoga journey. And then you also have the continuous support with the, the year long membership that will completely change your life <clears throat> in a positive way. You will not only become stronger and more flexible, but it will change your life in, in ways that you cannot anticipate. And it's something that happens to most people that do yoga actually. And it's hard to explain once uh, when, it, when it, we haven't experienced it, but everybody that is into yoga will tell you how it actually changes your life in the most fascinating ways that all of a sudden for me, for example, I stopped eating meat after a couple of years of doing yoga. I don't really, I can really understand why, but all of a sudden I just didn't feel like doing it. I just came into a completely new uh, healthy lifestyle about what I ate uh, and I created a spiritual practice. I just start to think about more in a more being super present in my daily life, which is extremely valuable to me. So that those $23 for the life change isn't that much. So yeah, exactly. You can ask yourself, what is more important, the fancy lunch or investing in yourself, in your health, in your wellness, in your physical and mental health in the future? And ask yourself also what happens if you don't take action. I think that nobody, I mean, nobody's getting younger. We all know what happens as you get older, you start to have different kinds of pains everywhere in your body, you feel worn out, you're losing flexibility, you're losing muscle mass. And there is ways to prevent it, but it's amazing to have a tool and have created a routine around that. That's something that you can stick with for the rest of your life, something that you will always come back to, that's something that's always there for you to keep you healthy and to keep you mobile and keep you prevent you from injuring yourself as you grow older. And also allows you to look super good and be feel amazing right now. So some pros and cons, clear path to get stronger, more flexible than ever before. I have uh, worked out quite a lot during my life, but I've never experienced the strength and the flexibility I've experienced since I started doing vinyasa flow consistently. And I hear this from all my students, that is a different kind of strength. And you will learn how to be more present in your daily life. You will have improved physical strength that will boost your confidence in other areas, and you will feel less stressed and learn how to take time to relax. And the cons is, of course, is an investment in time and money, and you don't know for sure that it will work. Uh, you only have my word for it. And maybe you haven't practiced yoga with me before, or you have done today, but you don't, maybe you don't feel like you don't really know me as a teacher. <clears throat> but I think this is <clears throat> my last <clears throat> slide good because I'm losing my voice. Um, so here is the final for today. I hope that you made this decision to, uh, to join. I would love to have you there. We're already a few people in the group, but we have room for more and it will be so much fun. It was, it was you joining and take, making this decision to let me guide you on this life change of yours. So 
It's been very, very nice talking to you today. And I hope that you take some something with you from this session and something that you can implement. And I hope to see you soon again. You were, if you want to give me a little good, goodbye in the chat, I would love to, so I can just see that you are still here and with me. I'm writing you now. <laughs> It's been very nice. Thank you so much, Lika. That's really kind. Really makes me very happy. And I hope to see you soon again. And um, I will stay in touch. You will get the replay of this and I will send you some emails during the week to, to ask you if you want to join. Take care and have a beautiful day. Bye bye. Yeah, I will say actually the final one. <laughs> now let's see if I can get back to ending this. Yes.